Hey, welcome to the interior of the MG4. This is a video dedicated to going over the infotainment system in depth. We've got a separate video covering the car as a whole, sort of our driving experience, uh, the charging uh, details, all the technical specifications of the car. But this is a dedicated video to go over how the infotainment system works. So what you've got on the dash is a 10.25 inch touchscreen. You've also got this supplemental screen over here for um, sort of driver information so it shows you how many doors are open, the safety information, um, and lane assist, that sort of thing, and also what drive mode you're in. But the screen is where all the magic happens, really. Um, so this is how you control the air conditioning. It's how you control the music, the radio. You swipe across to this other screen, and you've got energy management. So energy management tells you how much battery range you've got left, how much miles you've got left, and also when you're charging it, what the charging, how, much, how fast the, ch the car's charging. So mg 4 has got something called discharge settings. So you can actually plug in a three pin socket adapter into the car and you can power something like a kettle off it. But we'll cover, that's covered more in depth in our main review. So um, there's also energy consumption. So you can see um, how many kilowatt hours we use per hundred miles. So at the moment, so this car was delivered to me with 80 miles on the trip um, this morning. Uh, and it's, also, it's got, they've been doing three kilowatt hours per hundred miles, which isn't too bad. Uh, it's power consumption, five kilowatt hour per mile. Um, so there's a, a sort of trend and of what the car's been doing. Um, if we go back to the home screen, there's also the air conditioning settings. So annoyingly, um, like modern, most modern cars now, the air conditioning is all virtual. So if, if I'm using CarPlay, I have to come to a separate screen to control the air conditioning, which is really annoying. Um, but it's at least it's simple to use. There's a slider to control the fan speed. So that's pretty loud. That down to that wipe that down to off. The car does make some weird noises. We're in a studio. Um, the car makes some weird pump noises when the air conditioning switches on or off. So, unlike it looks like a Tesla Gary, but you've got these um, little uh, air vents to control, so that's fine. I'm just going to turn that off completely now. So, in these settings, you've also got the phone, the vehicle settings. So, there's a lot of AI, well, sort of AI, but safety features for the for the MG4. One of the ones you can't actually turn off every time is the lane assist, I believe. Um, but the lane assistance is turned off. Um, so I've, I've got that switched off at the moment because it is quite annoying. Um, there's also drive modes. So you've got snow, eco, normal, sport, and custom. I think on the steering wheel you can you can change the modes with the this little steering wheel button. I'm not overly sure, um, but if if I do find out, I'll put it on the screen. So I think the only way to change the driving mode is it is in the infotainment, which is about three or four clicks. So sport mode would tighten up the uh, steering, make it a bit faster to respond. You've also got the settings for the regen. So you've got low, medium, high. I've driven it for about 10 miles so far. Um, I'm just driving to the, the studio and um, they've got it in high regen. Uh, and it felt like, a, felt like a normal brake pedal, which is quite good. MG Pilot, that's all the safety systems. got convenience, so it'll tell you um, so function, so there's a, on the steering wheel, there's a little star, there's two stars, one's got a full star, one's got a empty star, and you can specify what shortcuts those do. So you've got CarPlay and Android Auto on the left switch, which is quite cool. And then you've also got on the right steering wheel, you've got the AC settings, which you can control with this button here. And then you can say, when you unlock the doors, just do all doors, driver's doors. That's, these sort of features you can't really set on, on most piston cars. Um, but it's nice to see that in some EVs you've got these options. Uh, lighting, there's also all these different lighting settings. You can say flash the car, find my car. Safety, so you can turn on the auto hold. Uh, you can power off the car if you need to. Video, this one's a bit strange. You can plug in a USB flash disk into the USB-C or USB-A and play uh, videos off, the, um, off that memory card. Got a standard radio, which... I struggled to find earlier, so let's turn that off. Uh, there is DAB and FM, there's no AM. So most, most DBs now don't have AM um, due to the interference they're saying, um, but you've got DAB radio in there if you need it. There's also a user manual, so you can access the whole uh, manual for the car um, and if you're not too sure what something is. So as I mentioned, the, the infotainment screen is split into two different Two different sections so you've got this widget area so you've got the ac settings shortcut radio the energy management system 
so discharge uh, and charging. CarPlay and then Android Auto. Um, the CarPlay on this model isn't wireless, so this is the this is the MG4 long range, so sort of the middle of the road. The SE and the SE long range don't have wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. They have wired uh, wired of both. Um, you plug into the USB-A uh, underneath this plinth, um, and you can use you can use CarPlay. So this charging pad also um, you you can run route the cables through if you need to. So along the bottom of the screen there are these uh, physical buttons. So you've got one for the air conditioning, one for the heated windscreen. Uh, one for the rear windscreen, the hazard lights, uh, the home button to take you back to this main this main widget screen, and you've got volume up and volume down. On the steering wheel, the volume up and down is on this right hand side, um, so you can control the volume that way. I'll try to turn that off. So there's also some shortcuts on the side here. So rather than going over to the right hand side, you can access these buttons here. These aren't user configurable. You just have to use what MG have set. We've got settings, music, phone, and the vehicle settings. So if we click on phone, we haven't gone through that yet. So you can connect your phone via Bluetooth to the MG4, uh, and you can also use use a phone uh, with a with a keypad there, and also what call history you had. There's one thing I noticed about the infotainment system which might struggle, or might make some users struggle. In some areas on the screen, the font size is pretty inconsistent. So um, if I go to the energy management section, for example, so I go back to the home screen, and then across to energy management. For some reason, all of these different areas here, they're all quite small. Now, I'm not old, but I, I can actually read these. Um, but I'd imagine some, some older people wouldn't be able to actually read some of the labels. And I have had a good comb through the user interface and I can't find any way of changing the, the font size, which is not very good for accessibility, really. Um, that's, that's the only thing I can find that is a main problem with the main interface. Um, I had CarPlay set up wired so i tried two different phones earlier and both of them were quite laggy um, but it's quite slow to respond to your finger touch which is not great while you're driving um, you, when you're driving you want something to be quite responsive so um, but yeah the, as i said the font size the so the main main screen here luckily everything is quite large but on the infotainment the on the energy management system it is quite small to read which uh, as i said might affect some people on the music section uh, there's two ways to play music on the MG4. You've got Bluetooth and you've also got USB. So I've got um, USB-A plugged in. So I've got something plugged into the USB at the moment. Uh, there's also USB-C, which is USB 2. Uh, I imagine that you can set which which is for the CarPlay because I plugged in CarPlay earlier um, and it did, it did say that it, I needed to use USB 1. So for the main settings of the MG4, you go to settings and there's a whole heap of different modes you can set. So you can set the brightness of the infotainment screen. You can set the the mode of the, the screen itself. So you can have light mode, dark mode, or automatic. It'll pick the, the one that's best for your conditions. So I'm going to leave it in dark mode. Language, you've got 24-hour format. Auto set the time, which will pick it up from either radio or the internet. Uh, units as well. And then you can say clock, display, and standby. Bluetooth, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can turn the Bluetooth on. You can even change the name of your car. So you can have like Alan's, Alan's MG4 or something. Um, and you can say synchronize call history with your phone, and then you can pick up uh, different devices you want to connect, like your phone. Volume settings, you can turn off um, some of the vehicle alerts, which is actually really good, because um, some of them are, are quite annoying. Um, different EQs as well. Uh, system settings, the software version of the car, you can put this, the car in factory settings. You can also update the car as well. Um, so it will, it will do that. USB storage. You can either plug in a USB drive into USB A or USB C, so those are underneath the plinth, uh, and you can access data off those. And also, you've got the bind vehicle setting. So there's an app for the MG4, and you can use it for setting the temperature when you're at home. Uh, you can either remotely start it, you can update the software, that sort of thing, or even see where the car is. So that's been a run through of the the infotainment screen of the MG4. We're now going to look at the driver's display over here. So just looking at the driver's display, uh, it's quite a nice. Nice big screen in front of the steering wheel. Um, you've got a view of the car on the left hand side. That will show you the lane assist and also how far you are away from the car in front if you're using cruise control. Got the speed in the middle, the state of charge, the miles left, um, what driving mode you're in. So you've got the normal mode there. If there's a seat belt that needs to be put on and also the gear that's selected in the car. On the right hand side, that's the bit that's configurable. So on the trackpad, well, on the joystick on the, side of the, on the side of the steering wheel, you've got these four buttons. 
if I click on this screen button, you'll be able to see it'll enable the the three buttons in the top right hand corner there. So you can switch between the voltage of the car, so uh, the voltage of the 12 volt battery, which is 14 volts in the, in the bonnet, and also the state of the pressure of the tires. If I use the little joystick to switch between, so if I'm, I'm just hitting right on the joystick, you can view the trip computer. So I can click on the middle of the square to reset the trip computer. I've got settings, so I've got uh, the brightness level of this actual screen here. So if I go down, I can set how bright this screen is, which is quite good at night time. Overspeed threshold, so if I want an alert on a warning when I'm going over a certain speed, I can set that, which is pretty good. That goes all the way up to 150 mile an hour, which is uh, pretty ambitious. And that's that's about it. Uh, the, this screen is pretty good. There's a, uh, a little uh, speedo warning in the, in the top as well, so it'll, that'll show up. It's got uh, traffic sign uh, detection, basically, so it'll work out it'll tell you what, what the speed limit is. And the bottom right hand corner, there is the regen settings, or the regen view, so um, this this uh, percentage here goes into negative numbers when you're in regen, or normal percentage numbers when you're um, just driving along normally. So that's been a look at the MG4 infotainment system. Check the links down below to visit theinterface.uk and our Twitter profile. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you again next time.